Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Um, obviously, today's session will be featuring ACE, um, which is our Academic Center for Excellence, through featured speaker Braden Athey. And Braden is a data scientist with a BS in applied mathematics from Florida State and an MS in applied mathematics from Texas State University. And he has experience using predictive modeling, data processing, and using algorithms to solve challenging business problems. Braden is passionate about understanding how mathematics can be applied in the real world and teaching others the same. So we are so thankful. Thank you for being here. And the student moderator for today is Herman McDaniel, and she is a senior majoring in actuar actuarial science, and she is from a small town in South Florida, and her interests are risk management, knitting, and animals. So thank you both. And Braden, I'm just going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Awesome. Uh, let me screen share. Um... All right. Can you all see uh, my screen? Yep. Cool. Um, well, thank you so much, Amy. Um, hold on, my mouse is like totally. Oh. All right, we'll, we'll make this work. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, I'm really honored to have this uh, opportunity. I know, thank you, Courtney, for nominating me. And uh, yeah, Amy, for setting this up. I think it's just really awesome. So today I'm going to be talking about how to make the most out of college. Um, yeah. So a little bit about myself. How do I minimize this? Okay. Oh, my, uh, I really can't see anything like my, hold on. We can totally see you and your screen if that's what you're. Um, yeah, I can't see my screen. What? Okay. Uh, you know, it's okay. Uh, okay, so a little bit about myself. Um, so I got my bachelor's of science in applied mathematics from Florida State uh, in 2016. So I am an FSU alumni. Um, I'm originally from Orlando, Florida. So I've spent the majority of my life in Florida. I grew up there. Um, during my time at Florida State, I was a peer tutor uh, with ACE. And so I did that from sophomore to senior year and just one of the most influential experiences of my life. Um, Absolutely loved it, learned a ton. That's where I uh, kind of developed my love for teaching, uh, developed just, um, I just grew so much during that time. Uh, after I graduated in 2016, I actually took um, the program associate position with ACE. And so I worked there uh, for two years post-graduation. Um, I kind of hit a roadblock after I graduated, wasn't sure what I was going to do. And that opportunity came up and just uh, like to this day, the best job, like had a blast. Um, I got to help uh, kind of supervise the math tutors, train them, you know, um, work with schedules and just overall try to like supervise the learning center. Um, and so I can talk a little bit more about that um, later. After graduating, uh, and working at ACE for two years, really wanted to go to grad school, still didn't have a great vision on what I wanted to do. Um, and so I got a, I ended up coming to Texas, packing up my bags and driving across the country uh, to get a master's in applied mathematics from Texas State University. Um, I just graduated from there in 2020. Um, so all the COVID graduates, shout out to all of you. Um, and currently I am a data scientist at Valkyrie Intelligence. Um, and Valkyrie Intelligence is a uh, startup in uh, Austin, very like tech world, uh, but we are a consulting firm and we consult with uh, big businesses um, to kind of do two things, uh, help uh, businesses understand what data that they have, and then to try to uh, build uh, machine learning algorithms, statistical, statistical models uh, to help give them uh, predictive analytics. Right. And so, uh, for example, one of the projects I'm working on now is helping to um, build a model that predicts the number of emergency transports that uh, they think someone would have. Uh, other things my company has done is we uh, do a lot of nonprofit work. And so we have uh, helped. We work directly with the city of Austin and the mayor's office um, to help identify people at risk for homelessness in Austin. And then we've also helped identify uh, people that are at risk for sex trafficking and trying to, you know, use indicators, risks, um, indicators, risk scores, anything that we can find out to identify like, hey, is this person at risk? Is this area at risk? Do we need to move people um, and take action? So overall, uh, working at Valkyrie, has, it's just like the best experience ever. Um, I'm, it's awesome. I love it. Uh, never 
I will say, ask if uh, even some people on this call, if you would ask me like four years ago, I never would have thought I'd uh, be in this position now um, and just feel super blessed to be here. Um, yeah. So other things about myself, random, that's a picture of me on the left, uh, to the right. I am a new dog dad, um, to the little, um, angel you see over there. Uh, she is deceitful. She actually will chew, uh, every single pair of shoes that I've ever owned. So I'm currently uh, speaking in socks cause that's just the name of the game. Uh, <laughs> so just, yeah, um, absolutely love her. Like we love her. Uh, but I will say if uh, someone tells you to get a puppy, it's fun. They're lying. Okay. They're lying. It's not a good time. Uh, the other things is uh, I absolutely love FSU softball. I've followed them like through my whole career when I was there, still follow them now. Uh, total diehard fan. Um, my partner thinks I'm insane when I have it on every day <laughs> if possible. I'll like stream the games while I'm working. I love it. Uh, and the last thing uh, down below, I don't know if anyone knows where that is. Just like make this interactive. Anybody know what that is? Is it in uh, Texas? Yeah. Yeah. It's where the bats go, right? No, no, that's not where the bats go. That's on Congress. But this is Capitol. Uh, this is 360 Bridge. You can actually hike up uh, there and see and see this view. It's right over the Austin Country Club and where the golf course is. Just like one of my most favorite places in Austin. Um, and so I added that because that's where I currently live. Um, I have lived in Texas for about three coming on three years. Um, and I am uh, just moved to Austin about four months ago, like in the city. So uh, absolutely love it. It's a blast. I do miss the, like sweet home, small town of Tallahassee though. <laughs> so uh, that's about me. Any questions? All right. Okay. Uh, okay, it's not going. Okay, here we go. So today I'm talking about uh, how to make the most out of college and one of my favorite quotes and like all great presentations start with a quote, I guess. I mean, whoever, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this is one of my all time favorite quotes. And I think it encapsulates uh, just like the idea of college and from my experience. Um, also, before I said I'm a complete math nerd, like absolutely think it's the best subject on the face of the earth. Uh, if you want to like call me later to talk math, I'd love it. Um, and so this actually is from um, the first woman to win a Fields Medal, and her research was in hyperbolic geometry. Um, and so she's from Iran, and just like an amazing woman. Um, and this is one of her quotes that I think it just is amazing. She says. Of course, the most rewarding part is the aha moment, the excitement of discovery and enjoyment of understanding something new, that feeling of being on top of a hill and having a clear view. But most of the time doing mathematics for me is like being on a long hike with no end in sight. And this completely resonated with me when I look back on my college experience. Um, I think it is, for me, college was just this long, it, it started a learning journey that I am still on today. And it just, it developed in me something that like, I like love to learn. Um, and uh, for me, mathematics, or for me, not only was it mathematics that taught me this, it was just college in general. It was the, of course, throughout, I had extreme highs, right? I got to do research with one of my favorite professors. I got to work at ACE. I got to, um, you know, I would ACE those exams. I would get that 4.0 GPA and I would be on top of the world. But a lot, and that was like, when you had a clear view, you're like, yes, this is what I want to do. I love this. I am going to go pursue, you know, a PhD. I love it. Um, but then there's also moments and, um, I like to say, I think I spent like 75% of my time at FSU confused, <laughs> um, whether it was confused in classes, whether it was frustrated that I didn't understand the material. Um, and I think I told myself that I would sit in classes and I'd be like, everyone around me knows what's going on. And I'm just the only one that doesn't, right? Like I'm not smart enough to be sitting next to these people. I don't know what's going on. And uh, what I found to be uh, on the other side of it is, is that's just not true. Um, and so I kind of want to talk about that experience today. So uh, you're like, Brayden, this is not a math class. And I wish it was. <laughs> but of course, we're going to talk about a math story. Uh, so I want to, uh, I also want to talk about um, kind of a story. So when I was in, when I was at Texas State, uh, getting my master's degree, again, not really still having a clear view of what I wanted to do. Um, I was a teacher's assistant. And so I taught eight classes over my time over two years. 
And uh, typically like anywhere from elementary algebra, pre-calculus, calculus, things like that. And uh, the beginning of every class, like the first day, you know, I'd always come in, introduce myself, make myself look like a fool, um, <laughs> and hand out a paper that said, um, you know, kind of uh, an initial assessment. I wanted to get students, um, I wanted to ask them a couple of questions, like math questions. Where do they at? What math level are they at? Is what I wanted to find out. And at the end of every uh, assign or that assignment, I would always write, like, what do you want to learn in this class? Right? Like classic teacher question. And I really just like want to get at, like, what, you know, what do you want to learn? What are you interested in? What? Um, and so there's particularly one class of, or one year of students. I, I, you know, I collected their paperwork. I came back upstairs to my office and it was about, you know, I spent like an hour going through them. I just like wanted to see what they knew and, you know, what questions they had. Um, and I, I came across one student and I'll never forget her. Um, and she had on her paper and what, well, this was like, one of the questions I asked and at the bottom of it, she wrote, what am I even doing here? And I like, I kind of smirked and then I thought, and I was like, what a common question that, I mean, I ask myself that approximately every day, what am I doing here? Um, and, you know, I, that really changed my perspective of what, you know, how students are thinking about this class. And the other thing is on the bottom, the number one question I get asked uh, in all of my math classes, whenever I tell people I'm a math major is when am I ever going to use this, Brayden? <laughs> you know, like how many people on this call have ever asked that question? Like, I don't know if you can virtually raise your hand, um, but uh, right. Like, when am I ever going to use this? This is like complete useless information to me. And um, I made it my goal when I taught these classes to answer that question for my students. And so I wanted to come out with to have them answer two questions for themselves is what am I doing here? And, um, and when am I ever going to use this information? Right. Because if you can answer those two questions, like while you're in college and to keep that perspective, it, it makes um, your experience a lot more fulfilling, I feel like. So I came back the next day and, you know, I was like, listen, I told my students, hey, everyone asked, um, what, when am I ever going to use this? And I am completely 100% transparent and honest with my students. And I told them this, this is why I have a picture of math. Um, the reality is, is I could sit here all day and teach you the quadratic formula. I can teach you how to factor a polynomial. I can teach you when to multiply. I can teach you when to divide. I can teach you when, um, you know, all of the different formulas in all of mathematics, right? And you're going to leave this classroom and maybe remember one of them. <laughs> and I can't tell you that you'll use this quadratic formula as you walk down, you know, what do you, what do you guys have? Publix there, not HEB. It's so sad. I'm missing out on HEB. Um, so when you, when you walk down uh, Publix aisle and you're looking, uh, you know, and you're trying to figure out what is the best unit price for the beans you're going to buy for this week, right? Like, no, you're not going to use the quadratic formula. You're not, right? Especially when you have a thousand dollar iPhone sitting in your pocket that like does magic when you speak to it. Okay. <laughs> you're not. And I can't say that if you don't go into STEM field, you may never use that. But here's the perspective I want you to gain is that what you will learn is you will learn how to be a problem solver in this class. And that is what mathematics teaches you. And so I said, you will learn what are, what are the skills, what are the things that I have? What am I missing? And where am I trying to go? Right. Every time I give you a math problem, you have to ask yourself those questions. What do I have? What am I missing? And where am I trying to get to? And what is the best path or formula or equation to use to get there? And problem solving skills, if we raise up a generation of people that are problem solvers, that is how this world has changed. That is how we have people like innovators. That is how we, ha how we have the iPhone, Apple. That is how we have, even if you're not in STEM, right? Creators, we have musicians, artists, dancers. That right there, problem solving, will serve you far more than this math class ever will. And that's why I really wanted to start my presentation off with keeping that perspective from a high level, right? If I, if I can get students to kind of, and, and, and I tell myself, and this is like preaching to the choir for me. Uh, so, uh, but if, you know, if we can keep that perspective, right, is from my experience, I have a master's degree in mathematics and I, 
I mean, what they say, we joke at my job, like, what do you do all day? I Google, you know, I Google errors that I get on my computer code. <laughs> I do, right? There's resources. I use Google. I use this stuff. But what I learned was so life-changing and life-altering for me from my undergrad and graduate career is how to solve problems and how to think. Um, and that right there, I think, is the key thing in helping students students on the call is if you can gain that perspective, right? Even if it's once a semester, even if it's once to take a step back and say like, hey, this is a really hard thing, but I'm learning how to think and I'm learning and I am learning skills that will further serve me in my life. Um, so that's my philosophical talk uh, on that. Um, but I do wanna have like some practical tips. Um, just, uh, yeah, some practical tips like, yeah, okay, this is great philosophical, but how do I do that like actually in the classroom and how can I keep that perspective? Um, and so I'll jump in to that, but I guess I'll pause any questions. Cool. All right, so tip number one that I have is how to make the most out of college um, come with an attitude to learn. And again, I think this goes all back to, you know, when I, I used to have one-on-one -on -one with my students when they'd come talk to me, um, and, uh, you know, why, why, are you, why are you here answering that question, right? And I have students, oh, man, Brandon, I just want to get a C minus. Like, I literally just want to get a C minus and never have to take this class again. And I've been there, right? I have been in classes. I'm like, please, God, give me a C minus and let me out of here. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, answering that question and can we change that attitude? Like, hey, I'm here to learn skills to help me further my career, right? Or help me become a better person. So with that coming with an attitude to learn is number one, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, the only dumb question is a question not asked and not asked. Um, and that is hard. That is extremely hard to uh, actually uh, live out in a classroom when you're uh, in a room full of people that you feel like understand and you don't. Um, and I think, yeah, just uh, being brave and asking the question and realizing there is if you have the question, somebody else in the room does too. So don't be afraid. Uh, number two, my teaching philosophy is don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, I, from teaching and from being an undergrad and in grad school, the some of the best lessons I've learned is because when I made a mistake prior, I'd take a test, you know, and then I'd look back and I'd be like, oh, that's what I did wrong. You know, I'm going to fix it for the next thing. So you cannot be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes are a part of life and that is how you grow. Um, number three, learn to embrace confusion. Uh, me and confusion have uh, gotten real, real, we buddies, we're best friends uh, these days and especially my job now. Um, confusion, uh, someone, you know, I saw one of my friends tweeted the other day is like confusion uh, is such an integral part of learning, right? If you are confused, you're on, the right, you're on the right path to learn, right? Because you're engaging your brain to think. You're trying to make sense of something that you've never seen before. And you're trying to make sense of how, hey, I've never seen this. It's supposed to be this, you know, and you're trying to make that connection in your brain. So embrace it. You know you're on the right path if you're confused. It's okay. Um, some specific learning tips, just as, um, aside, is set aside a specific study space that isn't your bed. Um, I can tell you the amount of times I've studied in my bed. Uh, it, it does not work every time. <laughs> I try to work still at night in my bed and it just doesn't work. I'm like asleep or, you know, watching YouTube on the TV or whatever. It just doesn't work. Um, number two, always, you know, this is all from like a math perspective is try to convince yourself of the material you're learning. Um, I always teach my students this, and, and, and even in my own job, I carry this practice to today. If I'm trying to learn about a new algorithm that I'm going to implement next week, uh, can I convince myself that that is the correct next step, right? Don't take everything you read online or whatever for like what it is. Hey, you know, the book told me to do this. Let me see if I can prove that. Can I convince myself that that's the next right step? And three, uh, teach the material you'll learn to a friend. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of study partners. I'm a big fan of, you know, sitting next to the person. Literally, I think the way I made the most of my friends in college and classes, I would like turn next to them as I'm taking notes. I'm like, do you understand this question? They're like, no. And I'm like, me neither. Let's meet at Strozer at five. I'll buy coffee. Um, <laughs> it's kind of how that went. Um, so make, make friends next to you and, uh, you know, I guarantee, again, you are not the only one that doesn't understand it. Um, cool. 
Next, um, take advantage of your resources. So at Florida State, especially, I mean, it's been a while since I've been there, um, but when I was there, just a plethora of, um, of resources for you to take advantage of, and they are all free. And so uh, the first thing you know, I would say is ACE, right? Your tutoring center. Um, if you need help in a class, uh, don't be afraid and don't wait till the last second to ask. Right. Even if it's, you know, you just want someone to sit beside you or work in a study space as you're working. Right. Sometimes it's easier to work when I have someone next to me that's also working and we can work through the problems together. Um, in my current job today, I spend twice a week in the lab that we work out of uh, and we have just brainstorming sessions. It's me and my boss and the two other people on my team in a big room with a whiteboard and everybody throws out ideas. What about this? Have we tried this? Have we tried this? And you know, for that purpose, the office I work in has no cubicles, no nothing. It is one office, 25 desks, and, you know, it's a wild zoo some days, but, you know, so people can collaborate, right? Um, so you've got individual touring appointments, and I, um, through my time at ACE, I met some of the most incredible student tutors, and they're still friends, some of them, um, extremely smart, They've been where you've been, right? They have been in the seat that you've been in and they've been confused. They've been lost. They know what it's like and they are trained to help you get through, right? To, you know, encourage you, support you in any way that they possibly can. So definitely check out the tutoring center. Um, I know ACE also offers like personal academic consultations. If you're struggling with, you know, needing to, you want study skills, figuring out like, hey, I quite, I haven't figured out how to study. I haven't figured out how to take notes, anything like that. I know um, Holly and Courtney are on this call and Dr. Barry, they'd be happy to help you, uh, you know, sit down with you and give you those skills uh, that you need. Other thing a plug in for is office hours. Um, office hours are key, but they are intimidating. Um, completely intimidating. And I like from a student perspective, I've been there like, you know, I've sat outside some of my professor's office and I've been like, <laughs> like, I don't want them to know I don't know this. Um, but I promise you, FSU has some of the best professors like in the entire world and they are there to help. And the end goal after being a teacher myself and teaching at the collegiate level as a TA, under, you know, at the end of the day, I, I used to tell my students this all the time. I want you guys to learn something right? I don't care what questions you have. I don't care if you come in my office and say, hey, I've totally forgotten how to add. That's fine, right? Come in my office and I want to address this problem now so you learn. Um, so just, you know, uh, come in your, come, come, to, come to office hours and ask questions. I uh, already kind of touched on study groups, uh, but introduce yourself to your uh, uh, friends in class. Um, and those, those people, you know, you'll have like a group chat, like, oh, you know, has anyone help? Uh, you want to meet today at five o'clock, you know, to study and to, it's just so helpful um, to know that you're not alone and don't isolate yourself in those situations. Um, and last, ask for help when you need it. Uh, don't wait until the last second. Um, we've all been there. I've done it. Uh, but if you identify a problem and you identify, hey, you know, this is not my strongest subject going into it. Totally fine. Um, happy to help, uh, happy, just, you've got to ask for the help because sometimes, uh, yeah, you've just got to ask for help uh, when you need it. Um, next, oh no, my computer, okay. Uh, all right, connect and network. Um, so this was like fundamental to my time at FSU. Um, I met some of the absolutely, like some of my still really great friends uh, through uh, going to Florida State. Um, I met people that completely and utterly like changed the trajectory of my life. Um, and so get to know your professors, your TAs. Um, they are there to help you. They are there to get to know you. And uh, I think one thing that I, looking back, is also realize that you have things to bring to the table to them, right? You have skill sets and you have questions that are gonna make them sit back and think like, oh, that's a great idea, right? There are, it's not just a one-sided relationship and there are things that you can bring to the table and ideas that are gonna be super impactful for them as well. Um, get involved. Um, and that's whether undergraduate research, uh, research join a club, um, study abroad, become a tutor, attend job fairs, um, any of those things. I will say uh, one of my most impactful um, 
things that I ever did uh, was, so so this year, when I started at Florida State, I was not an applied math major. I was actually enrolled in the FSU teach program. I was set. I was like, I'm going to be a high school math teacher. I love it. Um, and so I enrolled in the FSU math uh, or the FSU teach program. I, um, again, still really good friends with some of those professors. And I enrolled in a class called Knowing and Learning. And um, she, uh, the professor was Dr. Larson. And we sat down and I was like, you know, I'm great at math. Like, this is going to be a breeze, no problem. Um, she proposes this with this like traffic flow problem. So I'm sitting there thinking, she's like, okay, you know, take the day, she splits this up into teams and we start working on the problem. And so I'm like, you know, trying to figure it out and I'm real confused. And I'm like, I don't know how to do this. I keep trying, keep trying. And so then she, I look up and she's just like, okay, time's up, put your stuff away. Like, see you next week. And I look at her like, wait, but what's the answer? What? <laughs> like, you're kidding me? Like, you're like, I, like, I don't watch uh, TV and movies like that leave me on cliffhangers for this reason. Like, this is terrible. This is a horrible experience. Um, and, you know, we walked out of the classroom and everyone's packing up and she walks down the hallway and I'm like following her down the hallway. Like, I, no, like I will literally like stalk you down until like I find the answer to this question. Um, she's like, no, Brandon, it's okay. Like, you know, just keep trying, keep trying. And, uh, and we went like, I'm not kidding, a month, like working on this specific problem, developing hypotheses, developing all of these things. And I, and, and I remember like, I went to her office every day after class and I was like, Dr. Larson, what is the answer? This is not fair. Like, this is horrible. This is actually torture. Um, and uh, finally, like we get to the end of the thing, I finally like developed a solution that worked. And I tell you what, that class right there changed the, like it blew my mind. It blew my mind, right? Instead of just giving me the answer and that immediate gratification that I wanted of like, oh, I was right or wrong. She put me to work and she made me think, right? I had, to, I mean, I would like have nightmares about this problem. I would like lay in bed at night and I'd be like, what in the world? Um, and through that relationship with her and like, you know, actually constantly probably bothering her, <laughs> not really, um, she, her and I just developed a, like a, a friendship, a relationship. And she um, became actually when I graduated, I did research under her. She pulled me under her grant and I got to do um, research in linear algebra, which was just like um changed my life, thought like that moved me to try. I was like, all right, I want to do this. I want to get into to undergraduate research uh, for math education. So I thought I was going to go get a PhD in math ed, um, was sold like, this is just the coolest thing ever. Um, and I, I had so many awesome experiences through her. I got to go to San Diego um, to, uh, uh, I, I got to go to San Diego to present our research with her. I got to meet some of the, and I actually in San Diego is where I actually met my advisor for my master's degree in, uh, for Texas state. And so, um, again, just networking and like staying connected to her and staying connected to people is actually why I'm sitting where I am. Um, so I've just totally encouraged that is get to know your professors and really, um, just invest in those relationships. Um, Cool. Next, be resilient and stay persistent. Um, college is a journey. Um, that is hard. And I don't think enough people speak about how difficult and how challenging it can be at times. Um, you know, there are stories like college, yeah, the best time of your life, great. <laughs> uh, it's hard. But, there, you know, just like that quote said in the beginning, there are highs and there are excellent experiences and there are really, there are lows that, you know, totally just shift you thought you were going one way and you were like zoned in and it's just like whoop derailed um so that happened to me uh, multiple times but I think one of the big things was working with Christy I was totally or Dr. Larson I was totally set out on uh becoming a uh I was gonna get a PhD in math education I was set this is what I'm gonna do this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life I want to be a professor um and so right out of undergrad, I applied to grad schools, you know, all of these grad schools, like I wanted, I was dying to live in Colorado. That was like my all time place to live. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm applying, applying, applying. And, uh, you know, end of undergrad comes, the results for grad school comes and it was denied, 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 denied. And 
I didn't know what to do. Um, I felt stuck. Like I really had never before. I felt like I had failed. I felt like I had, you know, like, what do you do? Like you get out of undergrad and it's like, you get thrust into the world. Um, and I had no idea what to do. And it was people, it was connections, um, from people on this call and for, you know, other connections that I had. Um, and that's how I ended up. I was like, I don't know what to do. And I, that's how I ended up, um, taking the job at ACE. And that job is what led me to um, learning so much about myself and growing so much, giving me the time that I needed to retake the GRE, to really gain those skills that I needed prior to going to grad school, really evaluate what do I want to do, um, getting to do research post-graduation with Dr. Larson. I got to get that experience under my belt. And then I finally, uh, in 20. 18, I reapplied and uh, I got in. Um, so I got into Texas State and um, yeah. And so it was a huge roadblock for me and it was really, really challenging. Um, but again, just because, and that's why I say be resilient and stay persistent. When I got those denials, the first, you know, when I first graduated undergrad, like I could have given up. I could have said, you know what, grad school's not for me. I don't want to do it. I'll figure something else out. I, I had no idea what to do. Um, but it was conversations with people, you know, that said like, Brayden, don't give up. Like you can do this and you have every ability to do this. Um, so yeah, keep your goals in mind, um, and be willing to put in the work, uh, to get there. Right. I knew I had to get a better GRE score. I knew I had to learn better skills. And so just like be resilient, right. There are things that are going to put roadblocks in the way and there are ways to get around them. There are ways to, you know, just keep putting in the work and be resilient. Uh, next, don't compare your journey to somebody else's journey. Um, this is like, uh, I think so many people struggle with this. Um, and it like me every day. Um, but acknowledge that the journey that you're on in college is yours and yours only. And that's it. Right. And you have to do the things that, you know, make you happy and what, what you want to do. Um, and so, you know, keep your eyes on your goals and not somebody else's. And just because somebody else is going to go get a STEM job or this job and this, like you are there for a purpose. You have got direction. Keep your eyes on the goal ahead of you. Um, and next it's okay. If your goals change. I mean, I, I mean, I thought I was going to be sitting here from perspective of I'm a professor. I have a PhD and I don't, I don't have a PhD. I have a master's degree. I quit after my master's. Uh, it's okay. If your goals change and I am happier than ever. Um, so just, you know, acknowledge it's totally fine. And then keep an open mind. Um, last I'll say is when I moved to Texas, uh, I got my master's degree, still had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't even know what data science was. I was like, I had no idea. And it was through, I met a really good friend of mine now, um, at this dinner party and she worked for Valkyrie, this company. And, uh, she's like, what do you do? And I was like, oh, I have a math degree, you know, and typically everyone's like, oh my God, you know, like their jaw drops. And I'm like, no, really, I just, you know. I really just like count the number of people at the grocery store all day. So it's not that cool. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, and she was like, hey, like you have a math degree. I, you know, I know I work for a company. We hire mathematicians. Let me connect you to actually my current mentor. Um, her name is Betsy. And uh, she's like, let me connect you to Betsy. And she is a uh, like principal data scientist. And so we used to meet up and I'd be like, uh, what is data science? <laughs> I have no idea. And she taught me. She said, listen, you have these skills. This is what you need to know for this. And boom, boom, boom. So keep an, I never knew I'd be a data scientist. Uh, so just keep an open mind and be open to the different opportunities that come your way. Uh, next, believe in yourself. Uh, this is a key. This was a big one for me. I think when I started college, I had no, I, I had no sense of like self belief. I had no sense of self worth. I feel like, um, and I was really lost for a long time, especially when I, uh, you know, graduated with my, um, undergrad degree completely lost. Um, and so what I would say to you is be your biggest advocate, right? Believe that you belong, that you are enough, that you're good enough. You are smart enough to be sitting in the class that you're in, right? You're there for a reason and you can succeed. Right. Nobody, um, everybody, I think, feels this level of uh, imposter syndrome, they say. 
Um, and I think uh, as responsibilities increase and I went in the job that I am in now, I think it like imposter syndrome is like 10 times more than I felt in uh, undergrad, which I didn't think was how didn't think was possible. Uh, but the reality is you are where you are because you have the skill set and the ability to learn what you need to do to get through. Um, and so believe that you belong, you're good enough, you're smart enough, and you absolutely can succeed um, and get people around you that, you know, say the same things that encourage you, that cheer you on uh, to go forward and uh, finish this degree. And last, uh, have fun. Uh, I think I look back at my college and I spent so much time having like anxiety, like, oh, I, don't, I don't know enough formulas. I don't know, whatever. I'm like, I, I, you know, I didn't take that perspective, you know, like to look up above and see the whole picture. Uh, but don't forget to have fun, right? Uh, jump in the Westcott Fountain for your birthday, go to the football games, go to the circus, join an intramural team and do something out of your comfort zone, right? If, you know, your friends are like, hey, let's go do this. And you're like, oh, I've never really done that before. Like, just try it, right? I mean, it'll, I, well, yeah. And do something out of your comfort zone. Each of like, wouldn't, if you never would have played a sports team, join a sports team, try it out. Uh, you know, just have fun. Enjoy the college experience. Um, it is four years or however long it takes you of the best years of your life. It is super fun. It is um, absolutely life changing and um, it will shape you and form you into the person that you want to be. Um, and so, yeah, that, those are my tips uh, for how to make the most out of college. Um, yeah. And that's it. Um, again, my name and email are here. If you are interested, more interested in, I know I didn't talk a ton about like data science and what that is and machine learning and all of that AI uh, jargon. If you're interested in that or have a, a passion to be within data or analytics, uh, feel free to reach out via email. Um, I love nothing more to talk to people about math and get people connected and uh, you know, how how can I get involved in what I want to do? So if you need any of those, any of the help, please feel free to reach out and I am happy to help. Uh, thank you. Um, so we have a few questions. The first is, since you are very successful in all things mathematics, what advice would you give students who are struggling with math and see it as an obstacle? Good question. Um, what advice would I give students that see math as an obstacle is uh, number one, math is for everyone. Uh, it is a subject that uh, everyone um, um, can succeed at. Everyone um, and to definitely um, see math as a Again, keeping that perspective, right? Learning how to problem solve and reach out for help early on, right? If you get into a class and you know your weaknesses is like, dude, I am not good at math. Um, reach out to the professor, schedule weekly tutoring sessions, make sure schedule time with the uh, professor and be like, hey, I'm really nervous about this topic. I've had bad experiences with math in the past and I am more than willing to sit, you know, teachers, professors are more than willing to sit down. Let's help you get through this. You know, every, I think math is a very touchy subject. Right. I think uh, people, it's either you love it or you hate it. Right. I mean, there's kind of like no in between. It's like you're either like, oh, yay or no. Um, and so definitely just reach out early for help um, and stay consistent. Practice, practice, practice. So the next question is, were you a tutor while at FSU and how did that experience play a role in your undergraduate journey? Sure. Uh, yes, I was uh, tutored from my sophomore year to my senior year and absolutely loved every second of it. Um, it helped me see. Um, it helped me see mathematics from a different perspective. Well, I think one, it helped me like solid uh, solidify my own mathematical skills because teaching someone else you learn yourself. Um, two, it helped give me a passion for uh, teaching. And I, I lived for the days that we'd be in the study rooms or I'd be leading a group session and a student looked down and said like, oh my God, like I got it, right? Like I got the right answer. Like I had one student come by, I'll never forget it. And he, uh, you know, he found me in the hallway and he was like, Brayden, I changed, uh, I changed my major to math. And I was like, rock on, dude. I love that. Like, I love it. Uh, 
so um, yeah, just developed a love of mathematics, of teaching, of come, seeing students come to see mathematics for the beautiful subject that I think it is. Loved it. What advice would you give to students who are looking to get involved but not but might not know how to get started? <sighs> Good question. Um, what I would say is, I think it starts getting involved, starts out with the little things, right? So if you can get involved with even like reaching out to your classmate next to you, you know, and meeting those people and getting in study groups, you know, and getting involved, I think has this, you know, terminology around it of like, oh, it has to be this big, huge event and you have to be the center of all the attention. And that's not the truth, right? I think there are smaller organizations. There are even like study groups and meeting one friend and then going to this event together, find people to go together with so you don't have to go alone. Awesome. What was the most influential experience during your undergrad career? A lot of them. Uh, I would say um, being an FSU teach and taking that math class, knowing and learning and uh, seeing really struggling with math. And honestly, that was kind of the first time in my life that I struggled, like struggled with math. Like I typically was in high school. I was like, oh, this is a breeze, no problem. Uh, and then I was like, oh, <laughs> this is hard. Um, so being in that class and seeing uh, I just saw mathematics in a whole new way and it completely changed the trajectory of my life. Um, it just totally convinced me. I was like, I want to do something with math forever. So, yeah. Do you have any must do's for undergraduate student today's like you have to do this before you graduate? Oh, jump in the Westcott fountain for sure for on your birthday. Um, have to do that. Let's see. Uh, go to the football games, even like, I hope they're still having in-person football games. I hope that's still happening. Um, uh, if it was me, I would go to the softball games because they're like small enough that you can like, it's, it's not like a huge crowd, but it's just amazing. Um, and I love softball. Um, and, uh, highly recommend, uh, decorating one of your like friends dorms rooms for their birthday, like blowing up like a thousand balloons and like decorating it. It's fun. Awesome. Can, um, I got a question for, can you repeat the three questions you stated for problem solving? I think they started with, what do I have? What am I? Missing? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, what information do I have? Uh, what information am I missing? And where am I trying to go? So I can say, like, what information do I have? What information am I missing? And where am I trying to go? Uh, you could add a fourth, like, how will I get there? Um, and so that's like, for math terms, it's like, what equation will I use? But I think in life terms, it's, you know, a lot more <laughs> than just an equation. Sometimes we wish it was as simple as an equation, right? Uh, it's not. Definitely. Um, and how do you suggest students not compare their success in the classroom to their peers, such as things like grade comparison being a real thing? Do you have advice on how to shift that mindset? Um, yeah, I think to keep it on an individual basis and keep it as, um, you know, think about the effort that you put in, always bring it back to yourself. Like what effort did I put in? Did I put a hundred percent of my effort in? Did I give it my best opportunity and what can I do differently to make sure I, you know, succeed or the level of the level of success I want to see, what can I do differently to meet that? Um, and it's hard, you know, it's hard not to compare yourself to other students. And I think we all do it. I, I mean, in grad school, you'd be like, oh, what'd you get on the disc exam? Undergrad, what'd you get on this exam? You know, you leave the, I got negative seven for number four. What did you get? <laughs> you know, and you're like, dude, I don't even know. I can't even remember what the last thing I ate for breakfast was. Um, uh, but to really bring it internal and like ref do self-reflection on yourself. Did I put in my best effort and did I do everything from my power to ensure that I could be successful? And again, keeping that mindset, like I'm on my journey, 
right? Someone else is on theirs and I can encourage them and cheer them on, but I'm on my journey. These are my goals and this is where I'm trying to go. So. Um, do you have any advice or recommendations to a student who may want to take the GRE or another form of uh, college entrance exam? Yeah. Um, number one, don't let the GRE define your self-worth. Uh, that wrecked me. Uh, looking back, that absolutely wrecked me for a long time. Uh, I thought, I think I used that and was like, I am not good enough to ever get into grad school. I am not good enough to ever. And in reality, what the truth is, is the GRE is just a standardized test. It has, <laughs> it is, I mean, it, it doesn't tell me how smart I am. It doesn't, it's a number on a page and that does not define who you are. And that doesn't define how smart you are. And that even doesn't define how successful you'll be in, in grad school. Um, there is a program out there for you if that's what you want to pursue, and there is a, a a place for you, and there is um, there's somewhere that you will add substantial, incredible value. Um, and so, just don't let uh, a score uh, bring you down. And it's hard. Reach out to other people, right? Like I think sometimes the GRE is so like oh, no one talks about it. Oh, you know, and then you just internalize all of these horrible feelings. Like, oh, I only got a, you know, 12, or I don't remember the scoring anymore. I, I didn't do as good as my neighbor. I didn't do as good. I um, mean, so really like bring it to light, right? Like everybody struggles with the GRE. It's a reality. Um, so don't struggle alone. Brayden, you just hit me in my core with that. I think my soul <laughs> has just now mended for the first time in almost two years since I took the GRE. So I just, whoo. I think first, I just want to um, thank you for your, just like your passion, your positivity. I, I just want to put you in like a multi-day vitamin and take a Braden AP multi-day vitamin every day, <laughs> because that's the only way that I'm going to get through my stats class this summer for my doc program. So, you know, if I bug you on email this hey, summer, anytime. it's because I'm trying to survive. Um, but I also just think that everything you said today, every single incoming student at Florida State needs to hear. So I told you the recording is happening. I've already been messaging with some colleagues. I'm like, how are we going to use this? Because students need to hear what you said today. And so I just, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to be here and put together that presentation. It was awesome. And um, you're awesome. And we are very lucky that you are an alumni of Florida State. So I just want to thank you for that. And um, I don't think we have any other questions, but I, I do, will do a follow-up email at the end of the series. And um, if it's okay, I'll just remind them that they can reach out to you if they have any follow-up questions. Um, but again, we're just very appreciative. And thank you to Karaman for being here and for moderating and you both are awesome. So thank you. And Absolutely. You guys... And no, go ahead. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to share my deck. I can send it to you uh, in the okay. email. Um, and yeah. so you guys can have it. If you want to use it, by all means, go for it. Uh, and thank you so much again for this opportunity. And and <laughs> I hope you know, it's like I sometimes I wish I could take my own multi multivitamin. <laughs> like, I'm like, I need to take that myself. Uh, but thank you. You know, it's, it's been an, an, an awesome experience getting to reflect on my time at Florida State and really, uh, you know, pay it forward uh, to incoming students and just um, give them the, the skills and stuff that I wish I had uh, when I, you know, and that I, you know, look back and like, oh, man. So. It's been an excellent experience and thank you so much to everyone that's uh, given me this opportunity. And I almost forgot, I always ask this question uh, because in my alumni work, I cannot not ask this question. What okay. is your absolute favorite memory from your time at FSU? <laughs> Putting you on the spot. Oh, man, too many. I'm not sure I can share some of them. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, let's see. I, okay, so one of my favorite all-time things to do when I, was, when I was a student is I would be stressed out as all get out, and I would, uh, I had a truck at the time, and I'd get in my truck, and my friends, I'd be like, I'd call them up, I'd be like, yo, I just picked up Chick-fil-A, get in the car, uh, we're going to the top of the parking garage, and we'd play Frisbee till like 2 a.m., and it was just like the best time, like, it's just like, I have an exam tomorrow, I'm gonna throw the Frisbee, I don't care, you know, like, just... So it was so carefree, had a blast, like would watch the stars at night and just, you know, it was just so fun. I, I need to do that more. So, yeah. Perfect. Thank you.
And thank you again for your time today. Absolutely. Um, thank you guys so much. And I'll see you, see you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.